Every man carries a circle of hell around his head like a halo. Every man, every man has to go through hell to reach his paradise. Christoph, let me ask you, why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. Hello, YouTube. My name is Doug Kramer. Uh, this is the first YouTube video I've ever attempted to make, but I'm sitting out here in Los Angeles uh, under lockdown. I think it's like three or four months now since uh, like the rest of the world, we're under house arrest, uh, quarantine, whatever you want to call it. So while the world is burning down around me and there's literally nothing else to do, I figured now would be a good time to to pass the time and talk about what it's like growing up in a secret fucking society. <laughs> Cause that's what Scientology is. It's a secret society. If they didn't have secrets, they wouldn't have to have an army of lawyers and, um, goons to try to protect themselves, uh, from exposing the secrets. Right. And also if the secrets were exposed, they wouldn't exist anymore. So I'm going to talk about what it, what it was like, um, growing up in literally an alien world because um, this experience had a really, really profound effect on my life. Um, I think Scientology represents one of the highest like evils or crimes that you could actually do to a person. It robs you of, uh, of your life. And we're gonna go into great detail how that works. I, um, this is just going to be an introduction. Um, if anybody's interested, um, following my story, uh, I only have like four or five subscribers, I think. So I don't even know if anybody's going to watch this. So maybe it's just like getting it off my chest, but I'm going to make a series of short videos explaining the whole journey from when my dad first got into it when I was a kid and how that mind virus called Scientology spread to the rest of the family and what that all was like and then how i got out and where i stand today because it's taken me just a brief timeline my dad got into scientology when i was around eight or nine years old and that happened in a single day a single night and that's going to be where i'm going to start the story from and a long story short after my dad got into it the whole family dynamic, my life and everybody's completely was going down another course. And in order to, so, so I, I got into it around nine, eight or nine when my dad got into it. And I'll talk about that, but I didn't really become a Scientologist, a fully indoctrinated card carrying Manchurian candidate until I was around 19 or 20 years old from 19 to 20 up until the age of 33, I was a complete Kool-Aid drinking, 100% dedicated Scientologist. I completely believed in it. And shortly after I became um, a real Scientologist, around 19 or 20, a few years after that, I decided to move out to Hollywood and follow my dreams, what I wanted to do as a kid. And I'll talk about that a little bit too. So I moved out to Hollywood in my early 20s. In my early 30s, at the age of 33, I finally got my first break. I got a television, and then I started to kind of move up the ranks for a few years. And I was having the beginnings of a successful career. I was living my dreams. I was at close to the top of the Scientology bridge to total freedom. Uh, I got up to OT3. I became a class auditor. Um, I'll start to explain what all this crap Cause it's like another language. It's like another freaking like terminology altogether. So I'll explain what it means as we go. But basically I got up to that high levels. I was completely um, immersed in it. I was achieving my dreams as an actor and I've never felt fucking so um, unbelievably fucked up, lost and demented as when I finally got the beginnings of what I thought life was all about. So I'm going to talk about all that. Um, so up at the, I'm just giving you a quick timeline. So 
at the age of 33, when I had all that going for me, in one day through one event, which again, I'll talk about, I went from a completely dedicated Kool-Aid drinking hypnotized Scientologist to what the fuck just happened to me? My entire life is a lie, all of it. And I have no idea how this happened or what the fuck's going on. But it, it, that it's going to be hard to explain some of these moments because they're really um, surreal. But in a single day, at the age of 33, I knew my entire life was a lie. And so for the next 12 years, this was in 2008, January 2008. And we're now in, um, what, June 2020. So it's been 12 years that I've spent almost full time deprogramming from Scientology and understanding what happened. So it's taken me that long to really talk about what this thing is. A lot of people have done some amazing exposure, which may, is making it more and more possible for people to wake up to what's going on. And hopefully I can just um, talk about my story and go as deep as you guys want to go. Cause it's a really, um, it's a really crazy story. And um, I have enough distance from it now. And I understand it finally, where I feel like I can somewhat articulate it and start to talk about it sensibly. So thanks for watching. I don't know if anybody's going to see this, but if they do and you have any questions, anything at all you want to ask, everything's open, everything's on the table. Um, and maybe I can structure some of the videos around some of the questions that people have. But I'll just start from the very beginning when my father got into it. And we'll take it from there. It's quite a story. In fact, I have this um, this book, Going Clear: Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief. And that those few that statement pretty much sums up my my life. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll I'll uh, start another video here in a few days and update you. Take care. Bye.